Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement. I've been getting a lot of requests lately to start putting out more Bates Method 101 videos on YouTube, which is kind of where I started a lot of this stuff by uploading videos onto YouTube that teach different natural vision improvement techniques, mainly from the Bates Method. Things like swinging and sunning and palming and shifting, breathing techniques, relaxation techniques, and it's been a lot of fun to be putting that content out and actually reading the comments from people experiencing benefits and improvements in their eyesight naturally. And I kind of slowed down on that a little bit when I started adding a few more projects on. So in 2015, I started the Naked Eye podcast. In 2019, the Better Eyesight podcast. In 2020, we filmed and released a documentary film about natural vision improvement. So there's definitely been lots of other projects I've been focusing on, which have taken some of my focus off of the Bates Method 101 video series. Meanwhile, during all of this, I'm working as a natural vision teacher and meeting with my students online over Zoom and leading online courses and things. So it's definitely a lot to keep me busy, but I wanted to get back into the swing of doing some more Bates Method 101 videos on YouTube. And I wanted to start today's video by addressing what I consider to be one of the biggest misconceptions about the Bates Method, which is that the Bates Method is eye exercises. Eye exercises are different than the Bates Method, and I, I just wanted to reiterate that and clarify that and actually give you an example of that, something that you can follow along with today and maybe even experience some improvements within just seconds or even minutes of implementing this technique, which is called central fixation. According to the Bates method, this is the fundamental principle of the whole approach. And it's often something that people don't understand or they don't implement into their approach, sometimes because they're focusing too much on eye exercises. Now, I've been teaching this for a while, and I've, actually the second episode of the Naked Eye podcast is called Bates Method versus Eye Exercises. So back in 2015, I was trying to get people to really differentiate between these two. Because I agree that eye exercises, strictly doing physical eye exercises, is not really that effective. And that's why I teach the Bates Method, because it's different than eye exercises. A lot of times we have a vision problem and we think about, oh, what can I do to exercise my eye muscles or to strengthen them? People think, oh, my eyes are weak or my vision is poor, so I need to try really hard and, and take off my glasses and, and really challenge myself in that way, but that's not exactly what the Bates Method teaches. The Bates Method is teaching that vision problems are caused by strain and bad vision habits, and that if you're trying too hard, you're probably making the vision problem worse over time, and we don't want that. We want to make the vision problems better over time. Therefore, the solution is through relaxation, not exercise. And to get really specific about this, what I mean, this central fixation thing is a great example of how you can practice the Bates method and get improved eyesight naturally without doing any kind of eye exercise. You're already sort of experiencing central fixation just by watching this video because of the cinematic effect I have on the video where I am in focus in the foreground and the background is blurred. It's out of focus. This right here is already demonstrating what central fixation looks like. So central fixation is not an exercise that you do. It's a different way of perceiving your world where what you're looking at with your central vision is the most focused image. And the farther you get from that central area, the less distinct and clear it becomes. So 
This is kind of an, an exaggerated version, sort of a more kind of extreme version where there's kind of a sharp drop off from the clarity of the, the face off to the background where it's just like clear blurry. Your natural eyesight is more of a spectrum where it's clearest in the middle and as you go farther from it, it does lose detail, but it's not maybe gonna look quite as extreme as the video looks. But I'm gonna cut over to a, the same video, the same angle, without the cinematic mode on, just the normal video, and you'll be able to see the difference. So now we're in the more artificial way of seeing where not only is my face in focus, but the background is also in equal focus, even though we're at two completely different distances. So this is, this is kind of closer to the way that I used to see the world through my glasses and my contacts is it didn't matter if I was looking at one spot, everything was essentially clear. And the effect that that had on me in the, in the long term, year after year after year, was that I lost my central fixation. I had no idea where my central vision was or, or where it ended and my peripheral vision began. It was almost like I just had one vision and it was all the same. And that's not natural. It, it's not the way that our retinas are set up to function. The retina is set up where the center, the macula, is for detail seeing. It's not like you're, the whole retina inside of your eye is equal. And not only did I lose central fixation when I had my glasses on, so I would, I would have just this one clear vision with the glasses on, but also when I would take my glasses off, since I didn't have central fixation anymore, now I just had one big blur, right? So it was either one big clarity picture or one big blurry picture. And now, after learning the Bates method and applying central fixation into my vision in my life, it's different. It's not just one big clear picture or one big blurry picture, it's clarity in the middle and less clarity around the edges. So I've gotten my boundary between central vision and peripheral vision reestablished. Whereas before I had no idea what the size of my central vision was. And that's a question I love to ask people. If I were to ask you what size your central vision is right now, maybe it's something you haven't been asked before. Maybe it's something you haven't really thought about much or kind of mapped out in your visual field. So when looking at the screen, it, do you feel like your central vision is the whole you know, size of the screen itself? Do you feel like it's kind of the size of my upper body? Is it like the size of my face or my head? Is it smaller than my face or my head? And if you kind of keep going in that direction, the what Dr. Bates encouraged us to get to was a point of infinitesimally small central vision due to the fact of how small your macula is inside your retina. And by switching back to the cinematic mode where the background, the left and the right of my head and the background will all be less focused and less distinct is essentially bringing you one step closer to central fixation but that's not the full version because even with the cinematic mode back on and you're getting help with blurring what you're not looking at, my face is still too big. <laughs> it's still bigger than your central fixation spot. So there's still some things to learn and to implement, which we'll, we'll practice with as we move on. So let's switch back and get the background to blur again, which will maybe help you kind of come back into a central fixation place instead of we would consider this more like a diffusion place. You're trying to see too much all at once and it's overloading the system. So now that we're back to the quote, more natural way of seeing where the central vision is in better focus than the peripheral vision, you can maybe feel a difference already. And there might even be something more subconscious or unconscious that kind of likes this version better than the other version where it's all clear and focused. 
because that's not natural. That goes a little bit against the anatomy of your eyes. So it's really neat that we can actually use the screen like this to help us start to understand what natural vision looks like. I know the mistake that I made was that after living over a decade, depending on glasses and contacts that artificially cleared up my central and peripheral vision almost more equally, I was taking my glasses off and expecting to see that because that's all I knew. I grew up from childhood having this artificial vision that was more kind of spread out and in a more kind of wider area of clarity, which is a little unnatural. So when I took my glasses off and started working on improving my vision, I was almost expecting everything to become clear all at once. That was a mistake. Instead, I started to apply central fixation, which is all about seeing smaller areas clearer, having a smaller focal area that you're even expecting details to show up. Therefore, it leaves the majority of the visual field as peripheral and less important. It's not in your, you're not looking at it. It's not your focus. So let it be softer, just like the video is de describing or demonstrating. But what if we don't have the help of a video like this where it kind of has this shallow depth of field effect? What about when we just look at our real world? So if you look away from the screen and you look at something in the distance or something up close, and this is best done without glasses or contacts on, which might make it all blurry at first, but if you can play with it and relax, it's not about squinting or, or trying to make this happen. Central fixation is something you have to relax into. But a little experiment is since we were doing the foreground background with the screen, I call that like three dimensional central fixation. You can experiment that with your finger. If you hold up your finger and you have something in the background, so I have a lamp over in the background there. And if you look at your finger up close and then you look at a distant target, and you're kind of switching back and forth between the foreground and the background. This is the three dimensional version of this where you can be noticing that the finger in the foreground is central and maybe in better focus than the background. When you go out and look at the background, then we're asking the distant target to be the focal spot and the finger is in the foreground and less distinct. You may also even notice that the finger doubles. So it almost looks like there's two fingers. This is proving to you that you cannot see both the foreground and the background equally well at the same time. And you can't even see them single at the same time if, if your binocular vision is working correctly. This is a kind of practical way to demonstrate central fixation which you might be like, well, wait a minute, this is an exercise. You know, I'm doing my near to far shifting. I thought you said this wasn't about eye exercises. This is a, a practice that demonstrates a principle or a concept. It's an underlying habit, the central fixation. And so, yes, we do have a practice or an activity that we can implement to help us learn the practice. But in the long run, we let go of the practice because we have adopted this new vision habit and a new principle. So once again, central fixation is not a practice or an exercise itself. It is a different way of you looking at your world, learning how to differentiate between your central vision and your peripheral vision. I think that the three dimensional version is easier. The two dimensional version is also important to learn. It may not come as easily, but a way to practice this is if Instead of holding up one finger, if you hold up two fingers and you switch between the left finger and the right finger, now instead of them being three-dimensional on two different planes, now they're on the same plane. So they're at the same distance. It's more of a kind of a flat experience, but the question remains, are you able to notice that the right finger is less distinct when you're looking at the left finger? or when you look at the right finger, does the left finger look less distinct? The farther apart they are, the easier it is to tell the difference. 
if you're able to do it at that distance, then you want to maybe try closer distance so that the fingers are closer together, which makes the difference less noticeable. So they start to look more similar. Maybe they're both looking like they're in better focus, but if you can learn how to just see one at a time and let the other one be off center and less distinct and relax into that, then your vision starts to improve both near and far. What you want to avoid is eccentric fixation or I call it diffusion. That's where you're spreading out too wide. You're trying to take in too, too many details all at once that causes strain and that causes blur. So if we want to eliminate blur, we need to eliminate strain. And one big way of doing that is by adopting central fixation as our new operating system so that it's not just something you do when you're doing your vision practices or you're thinking about your, your vision improvement journey. It's actually something that is just happening. It's the way you look at things when you're walking, talking on screens, reading books out in nature. This is the new way of seeing and it's different than what you might be used to especially if you have a history of using artificial lenses, which really kind of pull you in the different direction of expecting the periphery to be just as clear as the central, which is not really what we're after with the natural vision improvement process. Two other examples that you can implement here would be when you're looking at people's faces. A lot of times people will accidentally diffuse and they're trying to see someone's whole face or head or even upper body all at once and that's diffusion. So instead, you can try switching from one eye to another eye and letting your eyes kind of go back and forth between the person's eyes that you're talking to. Maybe every once in a while, your eyes will shift to the bridge of their nose or their eyebrows, or you, know, you may not necessarily want to be drifting too far from, from their eyes or their face, but you don't want to stare and just spread out that's going to cause strain and blur. Another example is the eye chart. A lot of times people are diffusing when they look at charts or books or screens. They're just spreading out too wide and trying to see too much all at once. So that's why I put these little black dots on this chart here. So that little black dot is essentially meant to represent the size of your central vision. And you can see how much smaller it is than the letter itself. So if you're trying to see the whole letter A all at once, that's diffusion. But if you can pick a point the size of this little black dot and move around and kind of maybe even imagine that that little black dot is inside of that letter and it's, it's kind of moving throughout the black area, not only is that helping you look at the chart in more of a central fixation way, but it's also preventing you from staring. It's keeping your eyes moving, which is a really critical part of focusing without glasses. And hopefully it's making you feel more relaxed about the chart. Because sometimes right when we see a chart, we immediately kind of spread out and diffuse and then we run into problems. So, this is something that I really want you to become a little bit more aware of. And as you're building your awareness of central fixation, working on honing your focal area down to a smaller size, looking at individual parts of objects instead of spreading out and taking it in all at once, I don't want you to forget about your periphery. So just because the periphery is, quote, less important or less focused, than your central vision it does not mean it should be ignored or tuned out. Central fixation is not about tunnel vision where you're just looking in that one spot and it's not about staring. I know that that word fixation sometimes gets people to think about fixating their central vision on one spot and kind of getting stuck there. So instead we want to have our little central fixation size within a much wider visual field. So it's about having both. It's almost like having two visions simultaneously, having your small central vision that's working on getting details and colors 
and lots of movement and shifting. And at the same time, you've got this much wider peripheral field that has a completely different job. It's not about seeing the details or the colors. It's about sensing motion and space. So it's about orienting you in your environment, in your space, and your peripheral vision is very sensitive to little movements and motion happening out there. And that's essentially what you want your periphery to do throughout your day is not to see the details, but to see the movement. Now, if there's something that moves in your peripheral vision and it catches your eye or it catches your interest, what do you do? Then you bring your central vision over to it to get the details on it with your little central spot. But you don't have to, you can just recognize the movement and, and enjoy that. Know that that's a relaxing effect of knowing that your periphery is softer focus and really sensitive to movement. For example, as I've been filming this video, there's a window right behind the camera. And so even though I haven't been looking out the window with my central vision a whole lot, I've been looking at the screen or the camera, my periphery has been registering the cars moving up and down the street. A bird just flew overhead in the sky as well. And so I didn't look at it with my central vision. I didn't fall. I could have if I wanted to, but I'm more focused on the video right now. But it doesn't mean that I can't still have peripheral awareness. Now, the cars and the bird were all out of focus because they're peripheral. I'm not looking directly at them. The screen is in focus. But if I take the central vision out the window and now I am letting my central spot shift around on those cars down the street, they're in focus. But now my face on the screen is out of focus. Even though it's closer to me, it's peripheral. And therefore, it's not in that highest level of clarity. So if this has kind of been making sense to you, and if, certainly if you've been following along with some of my suggestions and, and ideas here, you may have already gotten a clear flash, which is when you stop trying so hard to see the whole picture clearly and you allow your brain to just focus on a smaller area. It's amazing how without glasses, without contacts, just by activating central fixation, the focus comes in and you get more details in a smaller zone, even though it might sound kind of counterintuitive at first. But this is all about your experience. And I really encourage you to be experimental with it and have this central fixation concept be present in your day-to-day -day life. And guess what? Even if you still use glasses or contacts because you need them, that doesn't mean you can't still think about central fixation. Yes, you will have this artificial lens that's kind of encouraging that more diffused gaze, but even with glasses on or contacts on, you can still differentiate between that smaller central focal zone and the peripheral area. So glasses on or glasses off, this is still an important thing. That was another mistake I made is I was really attentive to my central fixation and my, my central versus peripheral relationship when I had the naked eye, when I didn't have my glasses or contacts on. But when I would put my glasses on, it was kind of like, that went out the window and I just kind of went back to seeing the world in that more diffused way. So that I think is what kind of made it take longer for me is, is I was still holding on to that old way of seeing with that more kind of diffused gaze. Now, if this isn't making total sense to you, I would encourage you to keep studying central fixation. And there's a lot of opportunities to do that. I, I've already put out a couple other videos about central fixation in the past. You can look on YouTube for those. I did a whole vision tune-up series during the pandemic, and I did a whole one-hour class about central fixation, so that's a really good resource. Central fixation, since it's the fundamental principle of the Bates Method, comes up a lot in the Better Eyesight podcasts as well. So you can go to bettereyesightpodcast.com and even just search for central fixation and it'll, it'll pull up all the episodes that have articles about that topic. And I also included a, a teaching demonstration of central fixation in our documentary, Vision 2020 from Eyesight to Insight, 
from one of the workshops that I was teaching in Portland, Oregon. But to put it simply, I, I just love how Dr. Bates described these things in very succinct terms. And his shortest and simplest definition of central fixation is seeing best where you are looking, which can also insinuate the opposite, that you're seeing worse where you're not looking. So even if you just kind of repeat that mentally and, and kind of keep encouraging yourself to only see best in the small zone where you're aiming and allowing the majority of the visual field to be less distinct. It doesn't mean it's not there. It doesn't mean you're not picking up on all the movement and motion that's happening around the center. But I want you to become a little bit more sensitive to those times when you feel yourself spreading out too wide, getting too greedy with your eyes, trying to absorb too much all at once, you're overwhelming your system, which causes that, that tension and blur and stress. And so simply by letting that go, letting go of that notion that you have to see it all at the same time and simplifying this process of one step at a time, one spot at a time, that right there can relieve some of that stress and pressure and tension, bringing in this nice relaxation, which then leads to better vision, clearer eyesight, if we can learn how to kind of maintain the central fixation state as our new normal way of seeing. The Bates method is not just about going from wearing glasses and seeing the world in that artificial way to then taking them off and expecting to kind of see that same way eventually. It's not going to happen. It's artificial vision. We are doing natural vision improvement. It's about taking the glasses off and letting go of the old way of seeing, which is diffusion, and learning this new way. So it, it is actually sort of discovering a, a new type of seeing, new type of vision. And we it's not about exercising your way into it. It's about changing the, the way you think about this. It's a very mental process. Now, all this being said, Remember, at the end of the day, it's still always about relaxation. So it's usually a good idea after practicing with your vision or, or trying some of these new things or even just taking time without your glasses to palm your eyes and to find a state of rest and relaxation as a part of your vision practice. This is not about work, 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 try harder, try harder. This is about changing your habits, changing the way you look at things, and giving your eyes plenty of relaxation along the way, because they're probably already under a significant amount of stress and strain just from wearing glasses or contacts or, or having vision problems. And so eye exercises may just contribute to that stress and strain. So I really hope that you continue to differentiate between the Bates method and eye exercises. And I definitely want to continue being the voice for the Bates method and, and a proponent of the right way of doing this, the correct way of actually experiencing improvements. Like I've seen myself, like my students have seen in their vision. And like we keep hearing these amazing success stories and case histories every single month in the Better Eyesight podcast from when this work was originally being developed 100 years ago. So not only do I want to keep helping you improve your vision, but I want to keep equipping you with the right kind of knowledge to be able to have conversations with people about this, especially people who might say, well, that doesn't work. It's not possible. Eye exercises aren't effective. And instead of you just saying, oh, I, I guess you're right, or you know that affecting you or not really knowing how to respond, I want you to be able to know the difference and say, well, no, that I agree. Like eye exercises are not the best way to do that. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not doing eye exercises. I'm doing something different, more relaxation based. And the results speak for themselves and your experience speaks for itself. And it's the most important thing. So I would definitely encourage you if you do have anything to share or any questions about this to write in the comments. If you're not exactly sure how this works, or if you did experience a clear flash or any kind of improvement 
just by watching this video and starting to learn more about central fixation. Or if you have any suggestions of future Bates Method 101 videos you'd like me to talk about certain topics or practices you'd like me to highlight. Because like I said, I'm keen on getting back into the rhythm of releasing more videos more regularly. In the meantime, definitely explore that treasure trove of the Better Eyesight Podcast archive, either over at bettereyesightpodcast.com, or you can even join our Patreon and get even more involved with the community at patreon.com slash bettereyesight. If you haven't yet, you can also check out the documentary, Vision 2020, From Eyesight to Insight, and that will also leave you feeling very, very inspired and excited to really keep pursuing this path. That's over at vision2020movie.com. But for now, I wish that you have a relaxing rest of your day and hope you have fun playing around with central fixation.